Hey Harmonizers, we are at the airport again, little baby Melina. We are going to be flying off to Detroit to start a new adventure. We're going to head out to Missouri and then to Texas. So I've got the girls here, little Miss Evelyn. So because of the weird border rules, we're still flying across the border. And then it's actually my husband who's going to be meeting us with the horse and the truck and trailer on the other side of the border to continue our drive together. So this is just because these little munchkins are not considered essential. So we are allowed to fly, but not allowed to drive. So here we are going through the Detroit airport where we're going to spend the night. And then the next day, my hubby picking us up with the horse, which is Elon. And then we have a, a stopover at uh, just kind of a, a random stop along the way, nothing kind of too special. And then getting down to um, uh, Missouri, where we've got an entire day stopover, so that way Evelyn can have a, a good time and have a day with no driving. Here's a little look at the place where we stopped over. We literally just uh, stopped for the night and we're at a hotel, so Elon there with my hubby. And that's where he was staying in a stall in there. So we didn't do anything here other than just kind of stay. There's actually a lot of different places that you can book for stayovers like this. So little Mr. Elon now hopping back on the trailer to finish the drive off to Missouri. And uh, in Missouri, you might be wondering what's in Missouri. Well, we booked ourselves into a, a hotel. Here's just kind of going to one of the restaurants along the way. But more importantly, what's in Missouri, if you guys can remember back to my videos back in the spring, here's little Mr. Elon in a round pen, and this may look familiar to you guys. And I'm going to take you around the corner here in a second, see if you recognize where we're at and who we're going to go see, who is now in a little pen over here on the side. Uh, you can drop in the comments if you remember who's here, what we're doing here. And uh, you'll get a little glimpse of her in a second here as we walk over. Do you see her? That's little shiny bear or her actual registered name is um, shiny little diamond. So that's shiny. She's been training with Josh rushing all summer to learn some reining moves and performance moves for the extreme cowboy race because we are heading down to the world finals in Texas for extreme cowboy racing and shiny is entered in the futurity and Elon is entered in the Mustang race. So here in Missouri, we trucked over to an indoor arena to practice. And if you guys remember when shiny left, she was still having a lot of trouble with her ear because she had had a sarcoma on her ear and had to have this burning treatment on her ears done a couple times. And so she was pretty head shy and I had been working on that. You can see Josh was able to bridle her really easily there. He is riding her bitless in a Western Hackamore, also called a Basel. So he's uh, riding her in that. Here just kind of showing us a little bit of some of the warm up moves and doing a little bit of getting her to give to the bridle and get soft through her neck and doing a couple of those spins and stuff. So we're going to just watch a little bit of some of the stuff that Josh has been working on with little miss shiny and then I'll get on shiny. And the plan at world is for me to ride her in the futurity class. And if for whatever reason, it's not going well for Josh to get on and uh, ride her. Ultimately, I want shiny to have the best setup for success. Josh has been training her at home, but he's also taken her to a couple extreme cowboy shows to expose her to a couple different things. Right now, he's uh, doing a little bit of moving her hips and kind of showing the difference between the different rain positions. He's kind of going through some of the buttons on her. Now you can see he switched to an open rain, which is asking Shiny to start to do a, a spin movement there. You can see the little ears from Mr. Elon, who's watching and thinking, hey mom, am I going to have to work this hard? And so you can see Shiny did pretty well with her spin there and Josh is just going through a whole bunch of different maneuvers for me and just showing me what she's all about. So for those of you guys that are new to the channel, basically Shiny is uh, my little horse that I bought who's got some really nice reining and cutting bloodlines in her and with the goal of doing extreme cowboy racing and I started her under saddle myself as she was just kind of turning four and then uh, basically I was big pregnant 
and realized that if I wanted to do the Futurity with Shiny, it wouldn't be fair to her to try to get everything done myself over the summer while also having a baby and having a thoroughbred for the thoroughbred makeover and having a Mustang for the Mustang makeover. So I made the decision to send her off to Josh for the summer, who is a former world champion at the Extreme Cowboy Racing uh, World Finals and uh, champion of the Cowboy Up Challenge too in uh, Calgary. Lots of experience in this discipline. So I sent her off there to learn some different moves and become uh, knowledgeable in the different skills that she would have to do, hoping that that would set her up for success. So now it's going to be a matter of me learning to pilot her different moves. So her flying lead changes. She actually has a really weird sticky canner. It's um, it's kind of a short little choppy stride. Makes it a little bit more challenging to do some of the different maneuvers and also to sit to it a little bit. And her flying lead changes. Sometimes they're clean. Sometimes they're not. And Joss was working on kind of the body control pieces. He's got the speed. Um, the spin's pretty good. There you can see she did a, a nice lead change and it was a clean lead change. So she can do them, but she can be a little bit sloppy in her lead changes. She often wants to kind of break strides and swap. So she's not really a natural lead changer. Some horses like Elon, his lead changes came really easily to him. He pretty naturally wanted to swap his leads and does them cleanly. Whereas Shiny, you really have to kind of work for it a little bit. So he's asking, so you can see she kind of cheated a little bit there. She took a couple of steps of trot as she then changed leads into that left lead of canter. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a, a work in progress and still some more work to do with her flying lead changes. Here's another little look here as he comes around and she swaps her lead and she does it so fast, but she technically broke stride there, even though it was for just basically like half a stride. So she, she cheats it a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see what the patterns are at Worlds. And I'll probably just do quick, simple changes uh, to make sure that we get our lead change. She does know her leads and kind of is pretty easy about getting on those different leads. Here's another little look. See how she just kind of scrambled there into her trot or into her cannery. So she took those couple little steps of trot and just kind of um, was lazy going into that flying lead change. So here's a little look at the stopping and the rollbacks, asking her to take the right lead and just asking her to give her body a little bit. So some of the maneuvers in extreme cowboy racing that we need, we need spins, we need to be able to stop quickly like that. We need to be able to do rollbacks. We don't really know what we're gonna get asked in an extreme cowboy pattern. There are so many options of different things that you can be asked to do. So you really just need a super handy horse that is going to be okay with you directing them and guiding them. That's a pretty good stop there. Taking it into a little bit of a turnaround, uh, asking Shiny to get soft in her shoulders before he's going to head off in the new direction, uh, or letting her uh, have a little back off and then a turn, and then heading off in the new direction there. So she's a pretty little handy horse. She's got a lot of try, a lot of um, a lot of go. She's definitely got energy. She really reminds me of Dreamer, not just because she looks like a mini version of Dreamer, who's a retired movie horse of mine, but she acts like him too, just very kind of, all right, what would you like now? What would you like now? And there's a lot of go there. And if anything, you have to be careful about being able to slow her down. <clears throat> Here's a, a little bit of a look of a faster canner on her. <clears throat> Josh coming around here, flying around, and then he's going to make a little change to do a slower canter. Showing a little bit of that speed control, able to do uh, the varying speeds. And then the stop, you can see her tucking her bum underneath her. So wanting to see her use that hind end. She doesn't need a sliding stop for extreme cowboy racing, but she needs to be able to use herself well and stop on her hind end, which she was doing there pretty nicely. So me riding her, uh, I'm super good at starting horses under saddle and training the obstacles and helping horses be relaxed and stuff like that. But spins are something that is new to me and I don't get a chance to do a lot of that. 
So this was kind of newer for me. So this is me starting to practice Shiny's buttons a little bit. Shiny was pretty happy because here come the cookies again. Uh, Josh doesn't train with cookies. He trains with rest for the reward or the reward is in the release. So a little bit different than me, but ultimately uh, he's pretty soft when it comes to training the horses and he, uh, he I knew he was going to be able to teach a lot of different foundational moves to shiny so even though no cookies lots of good things about Josh and I felt comfortable leaving her with him for the summer so there you can see awkward for me I'm learning I was tipping forward here I'm going to do a few little more things on her so when I go slowly I can move a horse around their shoulders move their shoulders and move them around their hip pretty easily. And then when trying to add in the speed, it's figuring out where to put my weight and get in the right spot. So here, just an uh, opportunity to kind of see me learning a new skill. And it's kind of good for me to be able to see me riding because then I can be like, oh, okay, I was perched too far forward. I need to sit down a little bit more. So it's going to be fun to let Shiny teach me a few different things because I've never trained a horse to a high degree of reining maneuvers or anything like that. Uh, you can see going to the right, we do a little bit better as I start to figure things out a little bit more. And uh, we're actually riding in our new FX saddle. It's got mule bars on it because Shiny's built a little bit downhill and the saddle fitter recommended that we get mule bars. So that's what we're riding in, testing everything out. So everything is new, everything's feeling a little bit different. And I have to get used to that feeling and figure out how to cue her to do these different things. But super exciting that Shiny is going to be able to teach me a few different things and help me out to know when I'm asking correctly. Because when you're teaching a horse how to spin who's never spun before, and if you've never spun before, then it becomes hard to know precisely what's going on. It usually works better to have a horse that knows has already been trained to teach you the feeling of different things so you know what it feels like when it's right and then it's going to be easier to train that to a different horse so here i'm just practicing a few different transitions a few different little circles and things just getting an idea of how maneuverable shiny is and then over the next couple of days as we prep for the extreme cowboy i'm going to have to make sure uh, that we work on getting to different obstacles, that we work on riding straight lines, that we try to smooth this out a little bit more and that we are really understanding each other. So we have a couple days to really get to know each other and finesse things a little bit more. And today's ride was really just about kind of getting a feel for her and starting to play around with some of her buttons and different things that she's been doing. So that way I can understand her and she can understand me. And here's just a little look at going over a little jump with her. She's got really good form there going over a jump. Who knows? Maybe she'll be a little pony jumper. So this was really funny. Leaving Missouri, there's this train, and apparently there's only one train track. And so if there's another train that wants to come by, you have to stop and wait for it on the road, which is really bizarre, and it's a really long train. And once they've crossed that track, then they can get moving again, and you have to wait for the train to go. So kind of funny. Just thought I would toss that in there for you guys. Here's Mr. Elon. We also went back to Josh's place. He's got a few obstacles. You can see a couple of them in the background there, a couple of bridges and stuff like that. And then uh, while I was doing that, James was at the hotel with Evelyn all day. She did a whole bunch of swimming. And then I joined in the uh, evening when I was done with the horses and did some more swimming with them. So Evelyn got to have a full day of not any truck time at all, all just play time, swimming time, having a, a good time at the hotel. And that pretty much sums up our trip in Missouri, passed out Melina there, little Evelyn, there's uh, James, and then we arrived in Texas. So here is our hotel in Texas, my dad there, my mom with baby Melina, and I'm just going to take you guys around the room. And you can see we've got connecting rooms, we've got James on the other side here, and little Evelyn. So welcome to Texas, and stay tuned. <laughs>